Hello everyone and welcome to our second tutorial on structural dynamics. My name is Dr. Nastri Gademba and in this tutorial we are going to cover forced vibration of single degree of freedom system where the forcing function is of harmonic nature. Again uh, this tutorial is brought to you by Dr. Nastri Gademba Education Center uh, in conjunction with the Department of Civil Engineering of Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology. We have about one solved problem on this area. So you can watch the full lecture in the link above here. There is a link here. Click that link to watch the full lecture so that you can be able to understand uh, the derivation of the equation that you are going to use in this tutorial as well as the basic concept. So click this link here, watch. And again, I encourage you to subscribe to this channel for more tutorials. Click that notification bell if you have not done so. And thank you for the support that you have been showing on this channel. Let's continue learning. So we have a problem here. And our problem reads as follows. We have a, a machine that is weighing uh, 150 of 1.5 tons. is mounted centrally on a 3 meter span beam. Inside the machine there is a pinstone. You can say it's out of balance that is moving up and down, producing a harmonic force of magnitude uh, uh, three tons and the frequency of 50 rads per second. So this is the frequency of the forcing function. Eh? So if you neglect the weight of the beam and you assume that there is 10% critical damping, you are required to determine the amplitude of the motion of the machine and the force that is transmitted to the beam supports. So this is the forcing function, harmonic forcing function. We are required to determine these two, the amplitude and the force transmission. So let's see the probable solution. So as uh, usual, I always say, gather your information, visualize it. So this is a beam at the center here. So this is at 1.5 location. This is where our weight is located. And inside this machine, there is a piston that is moving up and down. It's out of balance. So it's causing harmonic motion. We are given that the frequency of this forcing function is 50 rads per second we also given this uh symbol you can see is uh, xi this is the uh frequency is the damping ratio and also we are given the amplitude of the forcing function is three kilograms uh 3000 kilograms so with that the first thing we need to do is to calculate the stiffness now you see this is a uh aurora support this is pinned so remember you can go you can uh, click on our, our lecture uh lesson two you'll be able to see how we uh lesson actually this is a uh, lesson two or lesson one i'm going to show in the link here again click that video you'll be able to see how we got the different for different supports condition what is the quorum stiffness the expression so with the stiffness we have that expression, you just need to plug in the values, you get the value of the stiffness of our system. Again, we are not given the value of uh, rigidity, uh, that is E and I, so we are just going to express our answer in terms of uh, fractional rigidity, rigidity EI. So you may find like our workings may be a bit tedious uh, uh, compared to when if we are given these values. So next step, what is the angular frequency? Angular frequency, the equation, in the previous uh, tutorial, we gave the whole expression. So we say the angular frequency omega is the same as the square root of uh, uh, kg over the weight that is given. Okay. Or in the another expression is the root of k over the mass, which is what we are expressing here, k over the mass. And then you get your expression for angular frequency in terms of uh, the fractional rigidity EI rads per second. Don't forget the units. So now another thing that we have here is that uh, there is this ratio R, which is called um, the frequency ratio. The ratio between the forcing frequency, the, or the frequency of the forcing function over the frequency of our dynamic system so we are given it's 50 over what we have calculated here so
So we have this ratio. Again, we express it in terms of AI. So with that, now we can go ahead and calculate the amplitude. We are required to calculate the amplitude and the force trans transmitted to the foundation. So that amplitude is expressed as shown here in this equation. So kindly click on that video here. You see the I here, click on that I here. You are, you'll be able to go to that video as lesson uh, number four, where you'll see how we derive this expression. So here in this tutorial, we are just plugging in values. Though the F note is the amplitude of the forcing function, we are given as uh, three turns. K, we have calculated. Again, you see, because of uh, the EI is not given, so our expression may be a bit tedious, but as a student, it's good to jog your mind. So you can simplify that to something like this. And I have left this part uh, uh, not simplified further, intentionally. So this part, this part represents the, the, all the vari these values under the square root in the denominator. Eh? So this is the amplitude and uh, it's the unit is in millimeters. So again, if you are given here, then you could uh, simplify further and maybe have uh, a single value like maybe two millimeters as the amplitude. But that's correct for me. Finally, we need to go to what is the force transmitted. Now, to get the force transmitted to the foundation, there is a ratio called transmissibility. And again, that when you're going to see in the le lecture four, the link that I've shared here, you can click there and see our full lecture there. Why I'm keeping reminding you to, to refer to this uh, full video recording is that that was a lecture recorded uh, during a live class. And that's where the derivational, that's where the concepts are explained. So this tutorial is just plugging values, but without knowing where we are getting this from, you may ask a question. I know students may ask a question, where are you getting these formulas from? That's why I keep on referring you to those videos. So click on that video there. So you see again, in the previous slide, I said the denominator, I left it, I simplified and left this part because you see this part is similar. Yeah. If you look at this part, it's similar to our previous slide when we are calculating the the, 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 the amplitude. Yeah? So again, we are plugging the values. So the, the work is only on the top part here because the bottom part, we already had the denominator. You can move to slide number four. You are going to see that. I'm recording this, so I don't want to go backwards. But uh, the good thing with the recorded video, you can always uh, replay it. Eh? So this we already had obtained. And then on, on top here, you see, uh, we just need to plug our values of uh, uh, damping ratio and uh, the forcing frequency, uh, the force frequency ratio. And then you can simplify further. And your answer is in Newtons. So this is very simple, a very simple tutorial covered in a very short time duration of eight minutes. So you should be able to work it out in about five minutes. Remember in a, an exam set or maybe you'll be given this EI so that you can simplify your working. So that marks the end of our tutorial. Our next tutorial will be, we'll now want to see another example where the forcing function is not harmonic right so we want to see when there is impulse loading eh? and you are given this question you can read it at your own time and this is the impulse the force and now our structure is hit with an impulse so we want to see what is the behavior we can calculate what is the maximum shear what's the bedding moment the sketches and so forth and so on eh? so this one will be covered in tutorial number three and uh thank you for your motivation people continue to subscribing and uh, making comments requesting for more videos so i'm motivated to make more of this because if we make these uh, videos for you so that you can uh, learn so once i know that there are people out there who are interested in these tutorials then i know for sure my effort is not going to waste so continue subscribing continue sharing this video continue writing any question feel free to comment on the comment section you can even send me an email the one that i shared uh, earlier or you can go to my about section uh, I'm going to share the links to other tutorial in the description uh, below, in the description uh, area. So watch out for the next tutorial, number three. That's all for now. Uh, goodbye.